Welcome to Zcast, everyone. I'm Zias Caravalla from ZK Research, and I'm here in person at Fortinet's Accelerate 2023 event, which is, of course, your largest user event. We're here down in uh, hot Orlando, right? So, uh, so uh, Narav, I'm with Jim and Narav Shah. Uh, you want to just give a quick intro to yourself and uh, what you do for Fortinet? Sure. Hey, everyone. I'm Nirav Shah. I'm a VP of our products and solution at Fortinet, looking after secure networking uh, products and solution. So yeah, really excited to be here at uh, Tech Expo, yeah. talking about many technology innovations. Well, it's interesting, because I think of you as a networking person, but you're working in a security company. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But you know, we are here at Accelerate, right? It's your, as I mentioned, it's your user event. And so, uh, what's exciting here? What are you hoping to learn while you're here? Yeah, look, uh, this is our yearly event. And every year at Accelerate, we announce many new innovation, including our latest 40 OS 7.4. And we have done a major announcement in all categories. Ultimately, the goal is to bring in the security and networking together and showcase how we can provide a consistent security. Yeah, there's no shortage of products being announced here, that's for sure. <laughs> so uh, so you, you open that can of worms, uh, bringing security and networking together. Uh, during John Madison's keynote, he's the, CT, uh, the uh, head of product, head of marketing for Fortinet. He actually talked about that, this, this term called secure networking and how by 2026, I believe it was, secure networking would actually be bigger than what we think is traditional networking. So first of all, what is secure networking? Yeah, look, so this is a belief that both Ken Z and Michael Z had for a long time. And what you heard today is, typically we have seen there is a networking, and the networking lacks awareness of users, devices, and application, and there's a security which is running in a silo. We are really truly believing in bringing security and networking together, which is cohesively working, and we can provide that wherever we want to deploy. So secure networking is as simple as security networking available everywhere across the hybrid network. Okay, so this is a topic that, it's fair to say we've been talking, as you mentioned, Ken founded the company out, right? So um, why today? So it's a trend we've been talking about for a while. Um, why is it important today, or more important today than it was last year, five years ago, right? So. Yeah, I think if you see today's world, especially post-pandemic, what we are all going through, two things are common, right? The, the users and locations are everywhere. Applications are also distributed. Yes. And because of this kind of shift, it's really important that you can't think about things in a silo. There is no point in deploying networking in a silo without any security. And this is where the attackers are taking a full advantage of it. This is where we feel that bringing the security and networking together and allowing customers the flexibility to deploy wherever they want is going to give them a better security, but more importantly, along with a better user experience. Yeah. So no longer an overlay, but actually an integrated part of it, and really a network service, or you can look at network as a security service. Exactly, yeah. right? It is, it is available in a one cohesive operating system. Everything is integrated, it is built in, and they can use it wherever they want to. Yeah, well I can tell you it's working, because I've seen your SD-WAN shipment numbers and they're through the roof, so obviously uh, customers are thinking that way as well. Uh, so, as you, as you did mention, right, you, you use this event to launch products and you had a lot of products here. I think the, uh, if I had to pick one product that was maybe the highlight of all products, it was the hybrid mesh firewall. And which is an interesting concept, but I'll let you explain exactly what that is. Yeah, look, the firewall is not new, right? Yeah. We have seen... Wait, wait, the firewall's not dead? Really? No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everyone says it's dead, right? So, we believe yeah, yeah. firewall is going to be the foundation yeah. for many use cases, and that's why we are saying that this firewall has now become the hybrid mesh firewall. And when we say hybrid mesh firewall, it really represents that this firewall needs to be deployed at on-prem, it needs to be in a multi-cloud, it needs to be cloud native, it needs to be firewall as a service. But the fact that all of this coming together have a single management, has a single AIML security, is truly where this kind of hybrid mesh way customers are going to adopt firewall in the future. So when I think of hybrid mesh firewall, then it's a fabric of different firewall form factors that take that firewall feature set and distribute it across everything. Correct, and, and you're so right because it's very easy to say, but when you see in a reality, most competitors or most vendors will try to acquire companies and build this kind of fabric. Fortinet has organically built this from ground up, whether it's an SD-WAN ASIC that you talked about or an ASIC innovation we have done in general. But now we're extending that to every form factor with the same unified management. Yeah, and so I guess what's interesting here is not that the 
firewall is dead, but it's changed in form factor. We still have our traditional on-prem ones, and maybe we don't need as many of those with people from home, but we need more firewall functionality and more places to protect us. Exactly. Because I'm not going to deploy a FortiGate at home. Ex right. Exactly, right? Yeah. And that's well, maybe where, if I get one from you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah happy to. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. Uh, that's where uh, we also today announced about SASE. Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah, I saw SASE. Yeah, right? Because this is really important for the remote users. So while Fortinet has a great solution of hybrid mesh firewall, at the same time, we have been developing our own SASE, which is to secure remote user, right? And uh, we are again bringing that SASE together in the same way, so it doesn't matter whether users are remote, they are on-prem, it is all integrated, and again, unified management to manage SASE along with on-prem, only Fortinet can do that. Yeah, and I think one of the benefits that has, actually, is it creates a consistency of experience for the user. Right, when I was, I, I know when I was in corporate IT, we used to tell our users all the time, when you VPN in, use the this version of Outlook and work this way, and when you're in the office, work this way. And what happens is it frustrates users. They like to work one way, right? And so uh, it sounds like what you're talking about is being able to use that secure networking architecture to make the users, the workers' life more easy, right? You're so right, yeah. because it is about giving those users working from anywhere a better user experience, like they're in a branch, and better security. Yeah. And it doesn't matter whether one day they're at home, one day they're traveling, one day they go back to office. Yeah. Experience needs to be consistent. And that is what 40 OS brings. The SASE is also powered by 40 OS, same way as on-prem. It's all organically built to solve this problem. All right, so you talk hybrid mesh firewall, you give SASE updates. You also had an SD-WAN update, correct? As you know, SD-WAN, we're a leader. We continue gaining market share there. And yet again, not only we announced- Which is remarkable, considering five years ago, you were nowhere in the WAN, right? Yes. So, yeah. yeah, so thanks to our customers and partners. Yeah. And, uh, but truly, today what we announced is, you saw we talked about a new ASIC, SP5 ASIC, yeah. but based on SP5 ASIC, not only SD-WAN can be used, but we are further adding more capabilities for visibility, for orchestration. One of the big things we have seen is overlay orchestration. Right? When you're doing the SD-WAN, the way you are creating the overlay VPN, we want to further simplify, and that was a step we have made to make the 40 manager overlay orchestration simple with more visibility. Okay, and then uh, I'm trying to think if you announced ZTNA was another one. Yes. Before you talk about what you announced though, can you define it? I, you know, it's, I hear it being used from everything from an upgraded endpoint to uh, you know, just a fancy VPN client. W what is zero trust network architecture? Ac absolutely, yeah. so look, <laughs> uh, as you said, VPN has been used for a long time as soon as you use VPN, it's an implicit access. Yes, you get access to everything. Everything. Yeah, which is why right. hackers love it. Exactly, right? And <laughs> the zero trust network access makes sure that anytime when I want to access an application, I only get an explicit access with continuous verification. That is really a per user to an application access is ZTNA. Right? Um, and what we did today is, everybody in the industry, to your point, talk about ZTNA, and they say, look, you have to come to my cloud and do ZTNA yeah. while there. We are saying it needs to be available universally. Not just as a proxy. Yeah. Okay. So it is available in the cloud, it can be in the campus, it can be in your home, wherever you want, it is available because it's part of our 40 OS. So what today we announced is, we are now saying the universal ZTNA can be also used for the user-based scoring, user behavior scoring, oh. and prevent access. Okay, so is a good way of thinking about a ZTNA then with traditional networking, uh, it works well because everything can talk to everything, right? And with ZTNA, nothing can talk to anything unless explicitly allowed. You're, you're so right, because that is a fundamental shift. Yeah. When we talk to any of the uh, enterprise leaders, they want to adopt the zero trust mindset, where it is never trust, always verify. Yeah. And a step number one for that is ZTNA, right? I have an agent, it doesn't matter, but when I'm trying to access, it will check device, posture, identity, and then continuously verify it. So the benefit that brings in is if I'm breached, and let's face it, everybody gets breached sometime, right? Yeah. It, uh, it contains the blast radius that if they get access to this one system, they're not, like in the, the case of the retailer that was breached several years ago, where the HVAC system was breached, they get access to point of sale. With ZTNA, that wouldn't have been the case. Exactly, right? right. So yeah. not only that uh, we will check when you're trying to get access, but while the access is there, suddenly if you're breached, we will also break that particular application access. Yeah. So the continuous verification is a huge part along with providing the ZTNA access. Okay, and then you had one last announcement, correct? 
yeah, uh, look, around uh, Wi-Fi uh, wi and yes. branch, right? So while uh, we also play a big role in our access point and switches, we are also announcing that our access point will be part of the SASE. What that means is, if there are uh, retail stores or there are customers who has access yeah. point deployed, and for their guest Wi-Fi, they want to do security processing in the cloud, we can do that. So access point can be deployed as a thin edge, integrates with our cloud delivered SASE oh. before you go out to access anything. So on-prem infrastructure, cloud intelligence. Exactly. Okay, that makes right? sense. So now, 40 net SASE, what we call a single vendor SASE, not only it has 40 gate integration, our 5G integration, we are now bringing AP integration as well to further make the ecosystem larger. Okay, well now, uh, let me pivot gears a little bit, do a little bit of vision here, right? Uh, we've heard a lot in the industry about AI and generative AI and chat GPT and things like that, right? We've heard more about it these last two months than probably the last, you know, my whole life, right? So, um, what is the role of artificial intelligence in network operations? Yeah, look, uh, I think the, the role of AI and ML is both for security and networking critical. I would start always with security because... So in some ways you have to have a secure networking in order to use it, right? Exactly, yeah, yeah, right? Okay. Because the AI and ML is playing a big role making sure that not only we are preventing and detecting the zero-day threats, and where AI plays a huge role in that, we have done that over many years, that same AI and ML-based technologies can be used for network operations to do a simple troubleshooting, right? Where not only we are finding out what's the next, where we can find the predictive analysis around it, but again, VAN, LAN, 5G, the entire secure networking portfolio, AI technologies can be used to further simplify our operations. Yeah, that's interesting, because it's uh, there's a bunch of things network up. So before I was an analyst, I was actually a network engineer. We spent a lot of time doing a lot of mundane things, checking ACLs and updating VLANs, and so a lot of the boring stuff goes away for the engineer, right? They yep. can, yeah. So, yeah, I know that's one thing that uh, a lot of my readers always fear is that AI is going to kill their jobs, but uh, it, it winds up becoming a tool that they can use to do their jobs better. I agree with you, yeah. because look, the I, I think the role that AI and ML is going to play is crucial for security and networking. Uh, I think it's going to make their life easier in simplifying it, but it is in a combination of preventing threats and making operations simple. Today, most people talk AI in a just silo way. Again, goes back to our secure networking vision. Everything comes together in a converge. Yeah. Okay, well, congratulations on the launch. Congratulations on all the new products. I think that brings us to the end of our video. I want to thank you for joining me. Uh, 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 on behalf of Narav, I'm Zias Caravalla saying thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time on another Zcast.